All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought I would give you guys an update on what is gonna happen. What are some of the plans that are gonna happen with this summer garden? I know that I haven't been giving you guys many updates at all on the summer garden, um, or even the figs underneath the low tunnels in this section of the yard. This is the area that gets a lot of sun and therefore is probably the warmest spot of my, of my yard. Also is on a really nice slope that helps with drainage. So this area here is prime and perfect for the figs, also for the tomatoes, these eggplants, these peppers, these melons, the squash, the cucumbers, all the things that really love those warmer soil temperatures. What's even driven that further to help aid those plants are these low tunnels. The plastic, not only does it help the figs, but it just exponentially gives you such a head start on the season um, I mean, I could probably even direct seed my peppers, my eggplants, uh, my tomatoes, all those crops I mentioned sometime in mid-April. Uh, mid when normally when we think about this, we're doing it in mid-May. So this is a huge jump on the season. If you can do it like that, if you're able to get the seeds in, you have these tunnels constructed, that's a whole month's head start. And that's pretty incredible. But what we talked about last year was actually growing food all year, 365 days out of the year. How is that possible here in this climate? And I really go, went over the steps, but it's coming to that realization now of actually happening because at least in the summer garden of growing food 365 days out of the year, how do you grow summer crops in the wintertime? Well, you can't. So what do you plant here in the meantime other than something like, you know, a cover crop, but let's say an edible, something that's edible, how do we grow and make use of this summer garden all year? Well, actually I figured it out. It was with the help of these alliums because you can plant the alliums in the fall and then they overwinter throughout the winter time and then you harvest them the following year, actually at the time when our summer crops go in the ground. So, they go in when the summer crops are done and you take them out when the summer crops go in. So it's a nice little um, flow right there. There's always something in the soil. Not only that, but uh, you're, it's edible. You're getting some edible food. I'm really making use of this small garden space. It's only guys 10 foot in width by like 12 or 14 ish feet. I can't remember how long it is exactly, but it's such a small area. Uh, compared to what uh, some other people might have. Even my community garden plot is double this easily. It's more than double this. So it might even be th almost, it's almost three times as much as this. So a lot of people have access, maybe not a lot of people have access, but you know, in terms of a garden area, you're not gonna believe, I should say, even if you have such a small space like this, you're not gonna believe how much food I'm gonna grow in this space. It's gonna be insane. And that's why I wanted to make this video and update you guys on the plans because there's gonna be like 20 varieties of melons in here. I'm gonna have like 10 cucumber plants. There's gonna be like almost 50 varieties of tomatoes just in this space. And people might be thinking, Ross, that's crazy. <laughs> how is that possible? And even back here, I'm gonna have all my peppers, all my eggplants, uh, even um, some tomatillos back there. So how am I doing this? I'm growing food 365 days out of the year and I'm growing all that food in such a small space. Well, let me bring you through what's gonna happen now that it's mid-May. What are we thinking about? What are we doing? Well, the first thing we're thinking about is actually taking down these tunnels. The tunnels did their job. Today is about 75. We're getting a lot warmer at night, mid-May really sparks in my mind the beginning of summer in this location. I know it's not technically summer, but uh, I promise you it warms up quick here. And because it warms up quick, these summer crops gotta go in and they gotta, they gotta enjoy this heat. They gotta take advantage of all that heat, all that sunlight. And actually these, this plastic, these low tunnels are creating an environment actually where it's too warm uh, or it could be too warm. So what I have to do now that it's really warm outside, if it's consistently over 70, I would say, keep the sides of the plastic open. 
Um, there's not too much of a benefit, I would say, in, in closing them at night and then opening them back up in the morning. It's just a little more work than I think it's worth. And also, if you're not out here early enough in the morning to open these things up when the sun's shining on them, uh, you, you know, you can really burn things and uh, kind of damage your plants a little bit. So we don't want to get too carried away with this. They did their job. They warmed up the soil for the last couple months. Now it's time to think about taking them down. I'm probably going to take them down about two weeks from now. So around June 1st, these guys are going to come down. And then I'm also thinking about, because really what we've mentioned is that we want to have the alliums come out all these garlic shallots and elephant garlic plants come out and then our summer crops go in well guess what i've had my summer crops in here for at least two or three i think maybe even four weeks now with some of these so these melons are in i have them all in there they're labeled some of them look better than others it's one down there that looks pretty good the cucumbers look even better because they're you know super vigorous by the way, our grafting really didn't go all that well for anyone that's been following along with that. I did have a video that I, I uh, filmed, but it just didn't come out well about all the failures around, uh, revolving around that. But the point is that we have all the melons in, we have all the tomatoes in, in the second tunnel here. And what needs to happen is we want to make sure that our melons and our tomatoes are getting all that sunlight because they're definitely a bit shaded with this garlic that's just, by the way, pretty darn massive this year i was really impressed i don't know if the tunnels made a big impact but some of the plants back there in this row really are massive and and look a lot bigger than any garlic i think i've had in the past and again i don't know if that's because of the heat from these tunnels or if it's instead uh the stock i used i paid good money for garlic seed that was quite large so that could have been it that's probably the majority of it actually, but the point is, is that I think we're gonna take the garlic out. We gotta take the alliums out of here around the same time we actually take down these tunnels. And it's gonna to be too soon because I don't even have scapes yet, which is crazy to think about that I would harvest my garlic or these elephant garlic before I even get the flowers and the scapes because that's like the best part. It's also just relatively too soon to be harvesting. Um, but there's a fine line here of like, you know, and what am I, what am I prioritizing? If I'm pri prioritizing the tomatoes and these melons, I gotta get the garlic out of here. I'm gonna take what I can get. I'm gonna let them grow. Hopefully they're all gonna flower. I'm gonna take them out, let them cure, and I'm gonna get what I can get from the garlic and I'll be happy. I don't need the biggest garlic in the world. It would be nice, but I think I'd rather have a better head start and better performing plants of these melons and tomatoes. So that's what's gonna happen is that we're gonna take this up. All these tunnels are gonna come down in about two weeks. I'm probably gonna harvest the garlic, the shallots and the elephant garlic then. Um, and then what's gonna happen is, I wanna show you guys my trellis system because here's how I'm gonna be able to grow all that food I mentioned in such a small area, like it's, it's crazy um, to really think about. But here's actually a demonstration I've set up, kind of laid it out because I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do this, but here is the trellis system of what we're gonna have. We have a row here in the front of herbs. I have thyme and oregano, um, we have, uh, what is that, rosemary, basil is all up in here. I can't, oh, this is called an Italian herb or an Italian perennial called uh, agretti. Actually, is it a perennial? I'm not sure, but I stuck it in the herb, the herb garden here. So we have the herbs in the front. And then actually this whole row right here is going to be 10 tomato plants spaced one square foot apart. And then another row, 10 tomato plants, another row, 10 tomato plants. And then actually this, going back this way, is going to be more trellises that are much taller. I've actually got myself, uh, you can see these T-posts here on the end, is what we have to kind of build up the, the walls of it, is I actually bought myself a 10-foot long T-post that you can see on the ground. Those we're going to peg in the ground, 
and they're gonna go lengthwise, and the same thing's gonna happen uh, even down here, is that they're all gonna go down lengthwise. But it's the same principles, the same thing's gonna happen. Uh, the same trellis, it's just a different height. Uh, but these are gonna go down, as I said, and there'll be about 10 melon plants, and then 10 melon plants, and then 10 melon plants, and then here's a little walkway, a little space for me to get through. Um, but it's amazing, I think, how much space I'm going to be using or how much I'm making use of this space. And it's, again, it's like, it's such a small area. What is this, like 140 square feet uh, at most, I think. So this is how the trellis is going to work real quick. This is really just taken from Josh Satin at Satin Hill Farms. Anyone knows him? He's just a market gardener uh, that makes YouTube videos. So he does a really good job and I, I love this trellis idea uh, where you stick the T-post in the ground, you put the T's at the top, the PVC, that goes right over top of the T-posts and then you slide over through this uh, fitting here your EMT pole. And actually I have two different sizes of EMT poles. I have the, I think the half inch and there's, I have a an inch thickness or maybe a three-fourth inch thickness. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but this half inch here is just not really thick enough. I put this here kind of as an example so that I could figure out what I'm doing. And actually what I think I'm gonna do, because this is just not very sturdy here in the center, this could very easily bend and not really support a whole lot of food that well, is uh, we have to beef this pole up, I think, but also I'm gonna bring in the sides so that there's more support towards the middle. And these T's will have a little bit of this EMT pole hanging out on the ends, but these T's will be closer to the center, uh, therefore allowing more support towards the center. The last thing here of this whole puzzle is I've got myself uh, some tomato twine. And this is very specific twine. There are some that, uh, can do a better job than others. And I think this one actually is what uh, Josh recommended on his video. But essentially, I will just tie this over here at the top and then um, tie it around the bottom of the plant. And this will just be wrapped around the plant and it will uh, be supported by this pole at the top. So that's how I'll vertically grow everything. Rather than uh, last year, we basically just stuck an EMT pole in the ground for every tomato plant um, or even every melon plant in the past. And then we tied them up to the, to the poles. So uh, by doing it like this, you just, I think you save yourself a lot of money and time. And uh, it probably looks a bit better too, if I had to guess, but we'll see when it's all done. So that's kind of it here, guys. That's really what's going to happen in the next couple weeks it's going to be insane um, how this whole area is going to turn into just a jungle and I'm not really even going to know what's going on in here I think so gonna admire it while we can and um, that's it so I hope you guys enjoyed this one maybe there's still time for you to get your garden to kind of do it a similar way as this I did touch on this a little bit in uh, in fruit talk episodes but I guess now you've heard it if, uh, if it's the first time. So thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one, all right? Take care. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you soon.